Kirby if you're into 3D animation, uh, the types of things I teach on this channel. The big news right now in the world of 3D, as far as I know, is that uh, Daz Studio, uh, Bryce and Hexagon, Daz Studio Pro, Bryce Pro and Hexagon, I have gone free on the Daz website, so go to daz3d.com. You can download all of these uh, three applications, and uh, some of the uh, there's also some extra content that you can download. And so all these three content uh, applications are completely free. And so as you can see, uh, Daz Studio. Uh, if you don't know, um, if you know the program Poser, this is their version of Poser. So Daz Studio, which I'm going to go into in just a uh, second here. Uh, Daz Studio is, is like Poser, and basically, you uh, what you do is you load, uh, pose, and um, render pre-made uh, human models. Uh, you can do other things with it, and you can download, you can load uh, creatures and, and vehicles and things like that. But its bread and butter, butter is basically, as you can see here, uh, you you load in these pre-made models, you uh, load um, different wardrobe onto them. Uh, different props onto them, uh, load the hairstyles onto them, pose them, and then uh, render that. Uh, and uh, also you can animate in it. Uh, Bryce is a landscape a design program. Uh, it's kind of like the poor cousin to like View Infinite or something. Uh, so it's not quite as powerful as something like View, which is used in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and other films. But uh, it's nice. You can get some nice looking landscapes pretty quickly. Uh, finally, Hexagon is a modeling and, and uh, 3D painting package, which uh, I'll go into in just a bit. Okay, so the first one, I, the one I think that will be of the most interest to you would be the Daz Studio. Now, Daz Studio has been free for a long time. This is the, the pro version of Daz Studio. And so let's get into here, and hopefully uh, it's a little bit resource heavy, heavy, so let's see. Okay, my screen capture software here is is giving me fits as I attempt to move the camera around. So we'll see what I can actually get done here with the uh, screen capture software on. But basically, uh, what it, um, when you first load up Daz Studio, it comes with this uh, kind of generic character here. This is uh, called the Genesis series of characters. And when you load the character in, you can go into the content library and you can, for example, load different content onto this character. So, for example, if you go here under wardrobe in the content library and you choose, for example, outerwear or something, you'll see here's a top like a red jacket. So if you double click on this, and this may take a little while here, you'll see it's reading the asset. And again, you know, like I say, the, the screen capture software tends to really uh, slow things down to a crawl. So, uh, you know, this actually is, is not, you know, the performance that you can expect from the actual program. While that's loading, let's see if there's anything else I need to show you here. Let's just click on the link for Daz, oops, products. Okay. Daz Studio. So uh, again, you know, how is uh, Daz making money off of these programs if they're giving them away for free? Well, the, the short answer is that they make money off of the content. For example, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to load characters in there, you can create your own characters and load them into there, but it's a bit uh, it's it's a bit difficult to do that. Uh, it takes quite a bit of, of effort to get your characters formatted in a way that Daz can handle. It can be done and whatnot, but basically what they do is they sell all of these different uh, 3D models. So as you can see, what you can do is you can load these different models into here. Uh, they have different base characters and then you can modify them over and over with different uh, uh, different clothing and morphs and things like that. Let's see if it's done loading. There we go. So now you can see that uh, after we've loaded that um, the top has been put onto the character. So let's go to the posing and shaping tab here. And I'll show you another neat thing you can do. Okay so um, one of the nice things about this uh, software is that if you load uh, clothing onto the character, uh, you can go in here to the uh, under the uh, posing and shaping window. You can go to the shaping tab, and then you can go ahead and start modifying the character. So, for example, you can change this character into more of a, of a child, like a younger character, and you can see we're changing it, you know, 
into almost like a baby here. And the nice thing is that the clothing and the wardrobe and the props are, are specially formatted to work with these characters. So as you can see, you don't need to remodel or rescale this stuff uh, like you would in a normal 3D program. Everything kind of scales with the character. So we'll move that back up to normal. And we'll make this more of a, right now it's kind of an androgynous character. We'll make this like a completely female character. All right, because that's kind of a female dress that we have there. All right. And then you can go ahead and, for example, you can start uh, manipulating this character. Now, what this, uh, what Daz does, which I'm not really a big fan of, there's ways around it. It does this kind of like a full-time IK thing, where when you drag part of the uh, part of the body here, for example, the arm, the entire body starts moving with it. So I'll, I'll try and show you how that works. Click on this. Unfortunately, the uh, screen capture software is is really you don't know let's um okay let's go to uh, wire shaded just so we can see what's going on. Okay, uh, so as you can see here, if we click on a part of the body here of the character. Actually, let's go to Click on this little uh, icon here to bring up the view menu. Oops, not wire. Okay, solid shaded box. Okay, so now we can kind of you know see what we're doing. So um, as you can see here, when, as you drag the arm around, oops, I don't want to scale it. As you're dragging the arm around, if you drag it to a certain extent, okay, come on. Again, the actual program is not this finicky. It's, so as you can see, if, if you hyperextend the arm, the body starts to follow with it. Uh, in Maya, this is called the human IK system. Uh, it can be very beneficial for posing in, in certain cases. Uh, I like to have a little bit more control over my poses. And uh, I haven't played around with Daz for quite some time. But, uh, you know, it can be beneficial. But, you know, I would prefer a little bit more control. I think there are ways, actually, if you go through the tools here, there are ways to uh, turn the IK on and off so that you can just rotate the object. So if you're posing the character, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but also there's um, down here, there's this thing called Anablox, uh, the animate system, which basically you, um, you drag these blocks of, of predefined uh, motion capture data. And as you can see here, there's a lot of different motion capture data. So you, if you all you want to do is just uh, bring in some pre-made characters, render them, uh, have them do some like nice little movements here. This is all motion capture, so the, the motion is human motion, so it looks nice. Uh, I guess the biggest problem is is that it's the problem that I have with with most of the Daz stuff, which is uh, the same problem that Poser has, is that everything is these pre-designed uh, characters and these pre-made props. Now there's a lot of vari variations you can do in there as I showed you. You can make the characters younger or older or bigger or smaller but uh, it, it's pretty apparent after a little while that uh, you know that a, a lot of this this stuff is kind of canned pre-made stuff and everybody that has this software has access to these same models and so stuff kind of starts to look you know generic pretty quickly. Actually, if you go to, let's let's go ahead and go to, um, this is no aspersion on Dragon Moon Press or any small press, but if you look at, for example, like a lot of like really small uh, online press uh, places, like for example, this is Dragon Moon Press, which is, you know, sort of uh, specializes in science fiction fantasy. If you go to their catalog, Right? That's not too bad, actually. But if we go through, and if you start looking through the catalog of different um, different books, you'll find that uh, they use a lot of this, like, actually, they, they use Poser for theirs. This this is actually not that, that good of a representation of, of the problem, but later on, uh, if you start looking through their, their, uh, their books, you'll notice that uh, they use a lot of like poser art, uh, poser characters, especially dragons, you'll see the same dragon over and over again in their different, uh, you know, their, their different books that they have here. 
So just kind of, you know, just be aware of that and whatnot. So, you know, again, you can, you can do some really nice stuff. If you need to get something done very quickly, then this is obviously uh, a good, good way to go. And of course, it, it doesn't cost you anything to get into the software. It's very user-friendly. It's very easy to set things up. Uh, it's very easy to get started. Everything is kind of run from presets. Just be aware of the fact that, you know, you're going to have to deal with the fact that you, you, you're using the same model that everyone else is using. Okay. All right. The next one, let's go ahead and load Bryce. Now, the, on, on the Mac at least, I've been having some issues with loading the new version of Bryce. I think it's because I had an old version on here. So I'm going to load up my old version of Bryce. And I'll just give you an overview. Now, Bryce has been around for ages and ages. It's one of the oldest programs, uh, basically, in the world of 3D. It's been around for quite some time. So as you can see here, all you have to do, you know, I've, I've loaded in this kind of uh, 3D continent here. And then you can see, you can start to drag this continent around. And uh, you have different options. You can load like a tree. So there's a little 3D tree. And you can just drag these widgets and scale things, move them around. You can see up in the corner here that there's a, a place where we can see like a preview of what we're doing. And if we go ahead... Um, now Bryce has kind of like a strange interface. You'll see that uh, the movement uh, icons and stuff have this kind of different look to them, you know, the, which is not not standard, let's just say that. Uh, it's not bad, it's just that it's, it's not standard. And uh, one thing it does that's nice here, uh, as you can see as I'm dragging this this uh, tree around, I wish more, let's go ahead and put in like a Lego rock here. I wish more um, 3D software did this, where as you can see as I'm dragging this, this rock around, you can see there's kind of a silhouette down at the bottom here. So it, you can actually kind of line things up better in the uh, perspective view when you have this. You can kind of see what it's, you know, basically how high it is above the ground and whatnot. But basically, Bryce, uh, I'll try and render here, but I think this is when it's crashed in the past here. There it goes, it's starting to render. And again, everything is presets here. There's there's a lot of different uh, preset you know, skies and comes with a kind of preset ocean here. If you go to sky and fog, you'll be able to, you know, change the sky and the fog and stuff like that. So Bryce, uh, landscape creation software, it's not bad. Uh, obviously, for free, it's quite nice. Okay. Now let's look at the final piece of software here. Yep, see, it, it crashed. Okay, and the final piece of software in the toolbox is Hexagon. Hexagon 2. It's the one I know the least about because I, I, I haven't really used this one at all, so I'm just going to load it here and just give you kind of a, a brief overview of it. Okay. So again, oh, Hexagon has a kind of, you know, kind of standard modeling package here. You've got your primitives. Let's create a little sphere here. Okay. But uh, the big thing about Hexagon is that you, you can do some modeling and whatnot. Um, there's vertex modeling, you can do things like that. Subsurface modeling. Um, basically, from what I've seen so far, I play with it a little bit. To me, it's, it's not nearly as powerful as something like Blender or Lightwave. Uh, it's, it's okay, but I think what I would get the most out of on this one is if you go to the UV and Paint tab, and I'm just going to go ahead and click on, a, a, give it a, some UVs so I can paint on it. Click on a spherical UV projection. And you can see that uh, there we are. We, we're ready for. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and make this full screen. There we go. Get all the tools on the screen there. Okay. So um, what you can do is you can go ahead and uh, you can start painting on this. Uh, first, okay. I've clicked on that. I found out here what you have to do is once you use a tool, it'll show up here in the properties window. You have to apply the tool. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on this paint tab here. All right, and then I'll just give it like a little pink color here. Give it some more opacity, and then we can just start painting on it. Now, one thing I haven't figured out how to do it yet. I've got to figure out how to turn off this uh, inner transparency. It turns transparent while you're painting, and as you can see, that's really a hassle because you have a hard time telling, you know, 
what you're doing, what, what the final product looks like. Whoa. And again, uh, what I found out is uh, you'll, you'll see that you're, as you're painting on it, it's still transparent. And then if you hit apply, validate and apply. Okay. Now you, you can see a better, see, this is what it should look like the whole time. So I'll just have to play with it and whatnot. And basically you can save it in its own hexagon format or you can save it as, uh, for example, if you save it as a wavefront object, then it will save the textures with it. At this point, I'll have to find out in the uh, in, in the uh, demonstration or, or in the pre preferences, it seemed to save the texture as a very small texture size. So I'll just have to figure out uh, different ways to um, get around that. But basically, you can see what it does. Um, you basically load objects. You could take, for example, objects you've already created, bring them in here and paint on them, and uh, just uh, mess with it that way. So three pretty decent pieces of software. Uh, again, these things are not going to challenge Maya or Blender or anything in, in the terms of their power. You know, ease of use is where it's at, and you know, using pre-made content is, is another thing that uh, these uh, pieces of software excel at. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this look at these pieces of software, and I hope you go ahead and download them and, and start working on them. I'll have some more tutorials up later.